HPC, five years. That's pretty crazy to think, you know? I'm sure you guys have a lot of memories. I'm sure you guys have a lot of, now that we can actually sit and talk about it, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the journey. Let's talk about, you know, kind of the past a little bit, how, it, how HPC came up and maybe some, maybe some highlights of, of, you know, the center itself specifically. I, I think for, for myself, and I don't want to speak for Raj, but it's, it was an evolution of maturing as a professional, as a clinic owner, um, clinician in the community. We were both hired uh, under the ownership of Anna Houghton um, with Northtown Physiotherapy and Fort Saskatchewan Physiotherapy and learned a lot in those practices, learned a lot from Anna, learned a lot from those communities. Um, and when we thought about where do we go next, you know, we had recently gone through the process of rebranding. Uh, we had become Pivotal Physiotherapy. We had a good indication of what we wanted to, to be as a company and, and what the brand represented. And I think finding a, a new location that we could build from the, the ground up was going to let us put our signature on something bigger than what we had already come from. Uh, I remember when we, we said, let's go downtown. What can we do that's central Edmonton? And we literally got a map out and put a pin and kind of drew circles around it and, and thought, well, how close can we get to downtown and not have our patients pay for parking? And uh, Oliver Square, now Unity Square, came up as one location. And where we're sitting today was a big dirt lot. And it was, it was completely barren. And we said, wow, there's a for lease sign on this, on this uh, retaining wall protecting the site we should probably get in contact with uh, the management group and, and see what's happening down at the brewery uh, and that's how we came to this spot um, that we're sitting at today that's beautiful yeah. what a wonderful story <laughs> <laughs> i think i'd add to that the like in addition to that kind of natural process of evolution we also had some clinical insights about um, where where physiotherapy in general was going and where physiotherapy should be going according to our opinion and that helped us once we had the location decided upon that helped us design the floor plan design the equipment make selections about staffing make selections about models of care and how our education will look how our coursework will look how our treatments will look what patients will experience when they walk through the doors you know once we had the location the next step was what's going to happen in that space and and that's i think what we've tried to shape and mold where physiotherapy is going and where that's going is the direction of tissue remodeling, active exercise, helping people become stronger, more mobile. Um, there's a complement use of manual therapy and needling with a lesser use of modalities and I think that those that tiered system if you will is the way physiotherapy is now going based on evidence and based on kind of trends. So would you say that HPC was kind of the kickstart to allowing you guys to kind of design the space in a way that you thought physiotherapy is a trending and kind of maybe this maybe this center was maybe not the guinea pig but maybe just the start of what would be the pivotal brand would would, would that would that be fair to say or yeah to a degree to a degree I think like HPC certainly accelerated the process for us um, and, and since HPC's inception, both the Northgate and Fort Saskatchewan clinics have also evolved. And part of that's because of us, part of that's because of the clinicians that we have on the team, part of that's because of the equipment that we've got, renovations that we've done, and so on. So certainly, like, I think it was somewhat simultaneous. The line of thinking was there, and then the logistics followed at HPC and our other locations. I agree with that. I think... Um what HPC has provided us is a blank page. You know, when you're, when you're working at a practice for a while, there's a certain amount of inertia and history, and there's a direction that that practice is going. And if you want to go somewhere else and you want to deviate, it's, it's really hard because you're, you're in that environment continuously. So it's really hard to be visionary and, and try something different without upset, uh, sorry, uh, upsetting the apple cart, if you will. But if you come to a completely blank piece of paper and you say, well, what am I going to do next? Um, that's what really HPC is from its, its design. Um, now we have this space. I, I remember the first day of working here and I had one patient booked and it was, it was completely different. The person comes through the door, how do I greet them? Where do they go? How do I use the equipment? Um, you're really creating a, a brand new culture and we've been able to, to work on that model here without 
determining what the other practices are doing and the lessons we've learned here we've been able to bring back to other other practices and I think has given us a perspective that that we wouldn't have if we've never stepped out of our comfort zone in the first place. I like that and just kind of touching on the lessons you know um, you touch on a little bit of maybe the struggles in, in maybe the initial initial years or um, you know, talk about a little bit of that, you know, coming up and making a culture here and making really making a staple in the community downtown. Uh, maybe talk about what what were some of the struggles kind of in those initial initial times of building that structure? I can start that one. Sure. Um, <clears throat> when when starting a startup practice, low volume is obviously a concern. And in the early stages, like Craig said, you might have one patient booked, you might have three patients booked. So you worry about caseload and you worry about volume and financials. So that's, I think, a natural start of any entrepreneurial journey, any business journey. Uh, so we certainly faced that challenge as well early on. Um, uh, one, of our, one of our good friends, Lee Hodgins, gave me some advice. He said, when you're growing, one of the challenges that you will face is how to make sure that your existing team still feels love and support and is continuing to grow while still balancing that with your new team and making sure that they're all unified as one team. And so that's a challenge that we have faced as well. I think our teams have faced that too. Um, we've done our best to try to unify the teams and keep them together and keep kind of like the, the, common, the common ground we share is helping patients ultimately recover and helping people perform at their best. So that ties us together. That's like, that's the easiest thing. And I don't think that'll ever change. So that's, that's been a challenge we've had to face. And I think we've done our best to, to do that quite well. Um, we did some team building early on at this location. We actually brought in a sports psychology consultant who, Marek, who helped us with some psychological exercises individually and as a group to identify what were our common values, what were our common missions, and also some of our behavior patterns and habits that maybe were different from each other, but that adds to the team, and then we're common to each other, and we can harness and make the team grow. So there was some strategy along the way. Oh, that's awesome. And I guess going the opposite direction, maybe t touch on some of the highlights of HBC, maybe some small victories or some small milestones that you guys hit that maybe you can touch on. I think one of the, the surprising things for, for me at HBC is the number of communities that we've been able to, to touch and be involved with. So there's a numerous downtown communities that um, use us because we're just close to their, their home. And I didn't have a really great sense of the density of population in, in these neighborhoods. And the number of people that um, I survey when they come and, and see us, I, I'd like to know how they found out about Pivotal. Uh, why are they coming to HPC? And, and there's a really large number of people that say, well, I can see your sign from my apartment window. And I hadn't anticipated that. I had anticipated that we would be uh, a center for communities of athletes, for basketball, for boxing, for soccer. And they would drive, you know, distance to come see us for specialty services and expertise. But I didn't count on the, the community itself. And it's been really wonderful watching this community transform. The brewery district itself is transformed. If you look at what's happening just north of our clinic and really all around our clinic, uh, the city is in a process of, of growth. And it's great to be in, uh, just be a part of that, be part of this community that, uh, that we all share. Any, any from you, Raj? Any highlights? Yeah, I mean, there's. A, I think there, I could go on for hours, probably about the celebrations. Yeah. So I'll try to narrow it down to one or two. Um, in addition to like the community at large, there's a community of physios, and it's kind of a small community. Um, I, I'm grateful that we've had a chance to meet some of those physios, work with some of those physios, and give them a place to like do what they do really well and shine. Uh, that's been something that I, I wouldn't have painted 10 years ago. And now I'm very grateful that we can paint that and look back at that. Um, secondly, the, we have, we've had a chance to really be involved with high schools, colleges, um, prep academies. Like there's, a, there's a something really novel that we've had a chance to do here with a variety of different layers of service and a variety of different layers of relationship. 
Um, but I'm also very grateful to have a chance to be part of that. Did the initial vision of HPC now looking back, you know, five years, you know, or looking back five years from your initial vision, has it turned out kind of what you guys envisioned or has there been, you know, a, a bunch of pivots? Has it not turned out the way you guys wanted it to? Kind of talk about that initially when the idea kind of popped up, has it manifested into, into reality today? I think our answers will differ. Yeah. I'll let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I, mean, I think certainly there's some been, been some twists and turns along the way. But I think what where we are today is we're in a place that I hadn't even like really conceptualized five years ago. Like the, the amount of uh, uh, networks and teams and organizations and individual athletes that we've been able to work with in the last five years has been really exceptional. Um, and I think it's, it's happened much quicker than I had anticipated. Um, so I feel like we're very fortunate um, in that regard. But the, I, I don't think I could have could have planned on this five years ago. I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah, actually, that's pretty close to my thought, too. I, I often, what the answer to that question for me is no. <laughs> Simply put, <laughs> like I didn't know where I'd be in five years. If you ask me today where I'm going to be in five years, I don't know the answer. I have a general goal and a general kind of like, this path is the direction I'd like for the company to go. This path is the direction I'd like to go. But the next 10 twists and turns or trails in that journey, I don't know what they are, but that's part of the beauty of it. It's like navigating, making decisions, problem solving. The puzzle is the joy for me. Amazing. And, uh, you know, kind of diving a little more deeper into HPC as its own individual clinic, how does it separate from the other clinics that you guys run on a day to day? Um, what makes this what makes you know the high performance center the high performance center versus the other other clinics? Yeah, I'd probably start by saying that the high performance center wouldn't exist without the other practices. Like we had, to, like Craig alluded to earlier, we've had to we've had the chance to learn from where we started, and that gave us knowledge, experience, insights to help shape our our mentality, which then ultimately shaped this location, and then it went the other way. What we learned here helped us shape the other locations to a degree too. So it has been a lot of back and forth. I'd say the team in general has gained from each other. Like, you know, you talk about in, on Ted Lasso, he talks about the, the trees will grow in the forest as a team versus one individual tree trying to grow on its own. And the, the trees will grow better as a group. So I think we've, we've been lucky that the pivotal sites have grown together in that degree. Um, but to answer your question, what sets it apart is partly the demographic that we serve in this location, like Craig said, we have a lot of specific communities that are in this area. It does act as a destination facility for certain athletes or certain teams. And then thirdly, it gave us a breeding ground for trying new things without the initial, like we don't have 35 years of experience here. So we, ha we had a chance and we had the responsibility and privilege to create something new. Yeah, I agree with all those things, and we we often talk about journeys and and where where patients are and their their injury recovery if they're recovering from injury or they're working on, on wellness or if they have performance goals. And I think you know the high performance center by name and and in reality is kind of focused on transitioning patients from wellness to performance goals. So the goals that we often see here are. Uh, improvement in sport performance, or they are, I want to run my first 5K, or uh, you know, treating sports injuries. So I think if you think about that, that continuum from injury through wellness and through, through performance, I think we've been more firmly rooted in the, the wellness to performance part of that spectrum. Um, and that's been a little bit different than the other practices. Um, but we've also, like Raj mentioned, that we've brought that knowledge back to other practices, and, and, and Northgate in particular, um, has a, a rig that looks like this and sport floor and uh, you know an amazing gym that didn't exist in North Edmonton uh, a couple of years ago so when it was time to re renovate and remodel and expand Northgate it, it really became uh, the flavor of, of HPC and we learned some lessons here that we applied there and I think you know Edmontonians in North Edmonton benefit from that now. I want to get a little more specific on my previous question is there a specific moment or maybe there was a specific highlight 
that kind of resonates with in each of you individually. A few seasons ago, the, the Edmonton Football Club had uh, a rash of injuries, uh, including Achilles tendon tears and ACL tears. Um, they had an astronomical number of injuries, and, and we had a, a good relationship with several, several of the players that suffered those injuries. Um, and we were fortunate enough that the club trusted us with their rehabilitation um, and allowed us to work with, with athletes right from the time of their injury through surgery to return to play. Um, and there's one of the athletes, you know, was able to recover from um, uh, Achilles tendon rupture and had it repaired and was cleared to play football in the same season. Um, so being a part of his journey and, and watching him come to the clinic every day and struggling and working hard and overcoming his obstacles um, in a really short period of time, a really unheard of period of time. I think that'll, that right now that is my, my biggest member of HPC is having the opportunity to work, to work with those athletes and, and watch them succeed. Mine's, that's beautiful. Thanks for showing that, Craig, carefully. Uh, mine, is, mine is actually the inception of the practice. Uh, that was roughly five years ago now, and we celebrated that inception with the launch party. The launch party for me is a moment of recognition and celebration of something like a new chapter, which really means you're kind of like opening up this chapter and then figuring out what comes next. And so for me, I remember that as as a, like a story of celebration. There was a lot of friends and family that were there. There was a lot of new people that we met there that were invited to be part of that community and be part of that chapter with us. So in terms of celebration, that's what the one that comes to mind. But it comes to mind partly because it's celebratory and partly because it means something new is about to unfold. So I, I celebrate it for that reason. Yeah, amazing. I love that. Um, thank you guys for sharing that. I think that provides a little bit more of a deeper, you know, I think it just allows me to understand a little bit more of the story of HBC just from the lens of you guys kind of going through what you guys have built here. So um, lastly, I just want to touch on, you know, what's next, you know, for HBC, you know, obviously you guys have built an amazing brand here, a culture, you know, there's the community is ingrained in this space as well as you guys in, ingrained in the community. Um, what do you guys see next for HPC? Where where do we see the next you know, the next five years, or maybe the next the next thing for the clinic specifically? Sure, I'll go first. How about this? Um, I think where where we're heading next, or, or where I'd like to see us go, is is working with with the athletes at a younger age and working with them in a developmental phase. Um, we see lots of athletes that have uh, specialized early in life and, and are committed to soccer or volleyball or hockey, and, and they do that at a very young age, and often at the detriment of their overall athleticism. Um, so we see injuries that are from that over-specialization. So if we're thinking about what does primary healthcare in sports performance look like, it looks like long-term athletic development, or LTAD. So I'd like to see us you know, continue to explore that model, continue to explore how do we, do we reach athletes just to improve their, uh, their overall physical makeup and their, their movement qualities. Doing that at a younger age, I think, will, will help potentially stem some of the injuries that we're seeing in the clinic now. So getting involved earlier and in a broader sense um, is, I think, somewhere we're, we're going, and we have lots to learn in the area, and uh, I think we'll, we're not really sure how that final product or involvement will look, um, but I'm excited to see us go that way. I would add to that, we've had a chance since our graduation to be part of the educational world and, you know, take students, help teach, help not only gain knowledge, but also share knowledge. We've been kind of in the middle of that journey. And we're certainly not the leaders in thought across the world, but we are, you know, curious people and we like to learn more about where the evolution of physiotherapy is going. So I'd like for us to continue to evolve in terms of sharing knowledge and, and challenging the paradigms of what works and what doesn't work as we go forward in the next decade of our career. Amazing, amazing. Um, I'm gonna throw uh, a little bit of a curveball as a, as a last bonus question. Um, you know, it's not really a crazy question, but basically I want to talk a little bit, just maybe touch on the culture that you guys have built here um, um, as, 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 as the team has grown. 
And I know that a lot of the physios and you guys yourself, you guys kind of hop from one location to the next. But obviously after five years, you guys have built, like you said, Greg, before where, um, you know, once you're in a clinic, it kind of has its own kind of system and culture already. And it's hard to change that. Right. So, you know, talking about, you know, you guys just touched on the next five years, but maybe talk about the culture that has been built since the initial um, launch of HPC a little bit, maybe the team, the kind of the, the vibe, the culture here. So maybe you guys can touch on that just a little bit before we wrap up. I appreciate your curveballs, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interestingly, we've been working on some like corporate executive team building and some common value sharing and establishing similar, like that line of thinking. What does bring us together? And what are what is the culture? And what do we want the culture to look like? So we did an exercise roughly three weeks ago, ish, uh, and we asked ourselves in a room, you know, what are some of the words that come to mind when describing the culture of HBC or Pivotal in general? And I don't remember all the words, but but some of them were um, like on brand was conceptual thinking differently, community oriented, positive and supportive and collaborative with one another. Feel free to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so th those words came to, to light in our conversation. Um, I would add to that that it's true when I walk into the space and when others walk into the space for the first time, if they get a tour, if they get an interview here, they're often feeling those things. Like what draws them here is, Happy birthday! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Q, you set us up? You set us up? Oh wow, look at this thing. Whoa. Okay, I make a wish and you're gonna blow it out. All right, all right. Happy birthday, HPC. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now you can do the rest of the interview with the bow. With the bow? With the bow? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Do you guys want can, to? Use can we eat them during yeah. the interview? Yeah. <laughs> Does this have nuts in it? Oh, I don't know. We might have no. pistachios, right? Here, I'll take it. Okay, let's, let's okay I'll take it just in Thank you, though. I really yeah. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Do you guys want to like, hold these? Like, yes, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to hold this. All right, let's continue the journey here. Okay, i got to move it away from the microphone, right? <laughs> You set us up, Keith. Yeah. It was great. It was great. I had to throw the curveball in there. Um, yeah, all right, let's uh, let's continue. So yeah, yeah. Um, Does it feel awkward with the ball in your head? A little bit. No, a little bit. I don't, you don't feel anything on my head, right? Unless it's a hat or a jig. So I'll pretend I'm a unicorn. Um, yeah, I think where where I thought Raj was going to go with this, and I think he would would go anyway, but. Um, we're thinking, you know, what does high performance mean in, in all areas? What does high performance mean in clinical education and mentorship? Uh, what does it mean for management and the evolution of a high performance team? And I think, you know, we've identified as a group looking inwardly over the next few years and the rest of the life of the organization is important to, to understand how do we communicate as a team? How do we allow our team members to set and achieve goals? Uh, how does supporting our high performance management team allow us to get to where we want to go in business? And we, again, we're curious people, as Raj mentioned, and we're not experts in, in every area. So I feel excited to learn how to, to bring our team uh, to fruition and, and, and get to where we want to go sooner and have everybody enjoy the process. Um, so I feel like that's, that's something that's new on the horizon for us. I'm excited about that. Is there anything else you guys want to share before we wrap up? We appreciate you. <laughs> well, I appreciate you yeah. guys. Thanks so much. And, uh, you know, I wish you guys all the best, truly. Uh, I've been lucky to share the, you know, the journey a little bit here and there, just from not only the outside, but as a, as a patient. So um, I wish you guys all the best in the next five years. And yeah, I can't wait to see what the next evolution is, not only about for this location, but just Pivotal as a, as a brand and a whole. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you.